into his presence. We're content to know a few theological shibboleths that other people have taught us. Dear God, one of the leading men in the Southern Baptist Church, a very dear friend of yours, I won't give you a clue after that, my dear brother, he said to me recently, he said, listen, forget our seminaries. There's no anointing in them. Those professors are teaching the le lessons on Romans they taught ten years ago. You can shake the dust off them. And every year they go back and say the same thing, Romans is chapter 1 and then chapters 8 to 11 and chapters 2 to... to so, <coughs> a parrot can say it. How can men sit and hear the word of the living God and not catch fire? Amen, that's right. Our God is a consuming fire. I hope, I don't know, what do I, what I preach tonight? When do I preach tomorrow, two or the day after? Mm -hmm. I have two more times, so maybe I'll get to preach on the incandescent man, I like that and then on the indestructible man. Mm. You see, the blessed word of God, it torpedoes us, it says, Elias was a man of like passion. Have you noticed so often God says, I look for a man. Have you noticed in the middle of his great, the greatest poem ever written on love, 1 Corinthians 13, has 13 verses, he suddenly stops talking about love and he says, when I became a man, what does he mean? Tell me manly, think it over. When did he become a man, what does he mean? When did he step out of spiritual infancy? When did he uh, move out of spiritual immaturity? When did that vision come? I want to preach on him one day before I go, I hope. Yeah, when you were talking last night about Hebrews 11, you know I read that chapter as I tell you. When I read Hebrews 11, I follow my place. Because not one person in Hebrews 11 ever had a Bible. And when I've read all about achievements, I'd like you to preach on this sometime, Manly. There's a verse there that staggers me and it says what? It says, they did by faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. And then one verse says, not accepting deliverance. What does it mean? I'd rather die than fail Christ. You can't imagine it, can you? There's a woman standing over there feeding a baby and the judge says to her, look, listen preacher, you take three grains of incense to that uh, at the feet of Caesar and all you do is say Caesar is Lord, you can go back to your darling wife and precious baby, if not, those lions are going to release them, the next thing you'll find a lion chewing your baby up, another one tearing the breasts off your wife. Do you love your wife? Are you tell me you're going to love a God you can't see to the wife? And he stands there and watches it. We've forgotten all about that. There's a book called Fair Sunshine. It's about the young men that were put to death in Scotland until 1665. And as you read them waving their hands and saying, I have three more days before I see the king in his beauty. You see, what our generation of preachers have managed to do, we failed to make sin diabolical, we've failed to make sin offensive, and we've failed to make sin attractive, uh, Christ attractive. That's right. That's right. You know, the only time you can sing the hymn of Wesley, Thou, O Christ, art all I want, the only time you can say Christ is all I need is when Christ is all you have. Amen. We're propped up with everything, our refrigerators are full. I don't have many clothes, but I have at least, I have two suits at least. And I have at least two pair of shoes. I went to one preacher's place. He had 35 uh, uh, sports coats and 25 pairs of shoes. He had nearly as many books. <coughs> <laughs> does, a, does a devil care what we have? Yeah. All he's worried about is that you catch fire yes. and then your church catches fire. Another thing, let me say this, I've gone round a bit, I know, but I've got to get wound up and say what I want to say. You see, the great revivals of Methodism were not in buildings, they were in the streets. Right. The Salvation Army set England on fire. Wow. Not by buildings. They, uh, the Bishop of Gloucester said, don't ever let John Wesley or Charles Wesley in any of our churches. They were both certified men of impeccable morality scholars, read the Hebrew and Greek, don't let them in the churches. And don't let that man, George Whitfield, in the church at all. Mm. Tell me who was the bishop at that time. 
Nobody knows. Don't care a hill of beans. But we know the men that got kicked out. You know, some of you guys, if you're faithful, you'll be kicked out. At least that's my prayer. I pray you'll all get fired for being fired. But God's going to do it. Don't, don't lose sight of that with all I've rambled on. You see, God used the same material before. They were flesh and blood. Many of them were fallible. Paul was saying this morning, some of them made great mistakes. But God looks on the heart. And they were able to see great movings of the Spirit of God. America is harder today than she's ever been. We have no vocabulary anymore. Nobody commits adultery now. They just have an affair. There's no fornication, it's premarital sex. Nobody's messing with spiritism, it's just channeling. We've taken the sting out of all the words. We don't talk about hell. We've got to get back to biblical theology. Right. And listen, we've got to do the essential thing. Jesus says, I, if I be lifted up, we're not preaching Christ, we're preaching drugs, we're preaching abortion, we're preaching crime, we're not preaching Christ. Our fathers, I've been reading very much lately again, the, uh, well, partly the Apostolic Fathers and the men up in the, the Puritans and the other people in that area. How they exalted Christ. It was Christ first, Christ last. You see, we've lost sight of the majesty and holiness of God. Mm. We don't tiptoe out of the sanctuary, subdued by God's almightiness and power and mercy. It's just a ritual, it's a formality. People know how we're going to start, how we're going to stop. But let's go back to the main issue again. The main issue, the church to vibrate. Boy, if I live within a hundred miles of this place, I'd be here every I'd be here every week at least once to pray with these guys. I wouldn't pray in the day when it's coming to about 9 o'clock till 3 in the morning. And see how men would come. They'll come. There's nothing more attractive on this earth than fire. Whether it's physical or spiritual, fire is the most attractive. Our God is a consuming fire. And the only answer to hellfire is Holy Ghost fire.